hi people it's me Anya my pronouns are she and her and welcome back to my channel for another recent leads video first of all i apologize that last month in july my videos weren't as consistent as they used to be that's because honestly i haven't been feeling my best but hopefully in august my videos will be more consistent and be as consistent as they used to be because in mid-august i will stop working and then a week after that i will start school again so that's exciting but anyway, the point is, the first book on this list is called The Language of Seabirds. This book is a middle-aged queer Achillean contemporary following a young boy who finds first love over a seaside summer. This book is absolutely so good and I really, really enjoyed it. So I rated it four stars and with that I would highly recommend it. First of all, the story itself was so tender and it was absolutely so wholesome and it was so well done. The Achillean world was so cute and it was so well developed and the characters themselves were so distinct and i just really enjoyed the entire story because it was literally so good the plot was so intriguing and so engaging the family dynamics were so lovely and so wonderful this book is absolutely so fantastic and it deserves so much more hype and i would gladly read more from the author in the future because their writing was like so lyrical and it was so well done so anyway with all that said i rated this book four stars and with that i would highly highly recommend it the next book on this list is called The Prince's Shadow. This book is a middle fantasy following a young boy in an alternate Egypt who must survive and compete against other people in order to become the prince's shadow, which is like a specialized bodyguard for the prince. And this book is so good. First of all, the synopsis kind of reminded me of like Ray Bear in Blood Sky on, except that it's in middle grade. And if you guys know, I love those two books so much. So that's a really, really high compliment. Second of all, the plot was so engaging and absolutely so intriguing. Third of all, the world building was so immersive. I really enjoyed how the Egyptian mythology played into the story because it was so well done. The characters are so well developed and so distinct. And I just really, really enjoyed this book because it was so immersive and it was just really like a fun adventure. And I just really, really enjoyed it. I don't know if this book is a fantasy standalone or if there are sequels planned in the future or anything like that. But I would gladly continue to read the series if there are sequels. Or I would rather read more from the author in the future because his writing is absolutely so good. So anyway, with all that said, I rated this book four stars and I really, really enjoyed it. So with that said, I would highly, highly recommend it. The next book on this list is called The Midnight Orchestra. For those who don't know, this book is a middle grade fantasy sequel and it's the second book in this series. And honestly, I'm not quite sure how many books the author has planned for this book series but it's absolutely so good and each book keeps getting better and better and better so i expect that book three will be so good as well anyway all that to say this book was so good and i rated it four stars because i really really enjoyed it and with that i would highly highly recommend it first of all the world building was so like creative and inventive and it was so immersive the story itself was so awesome. The plot was so intriguing and so engaging. The characters continue to be so well developed and so distinct. This author is literally so good at crafting characters that are like so well developed and so distinct. And I love the friendship. Literally, it's so wholesome and it's so well done. Literally, this book is so good. I love this world. I love these characters. This series is so awesome and it's so well done. And this book series is literally so underrated and it deserves so much more hype. So anyway, with all that said, I rated this book four stars because I really, really enjoyed it. And with that, I would highly, highly recommend it. The next book on this list is called Beating Heart Baby. This book is a YA contemporary following a pair of queer Asian boys as they connect over first love, second chances, and music. I rated this book three stars because honestly it was disappointing even though the first half of the story was really really strong. I was falling in love with the characters, the plot, the romance, the queer friendship group, the family dynamics and everything like that and I was expecting honestly to rate this book four stars because I was really really enjoying it. I was so immersed in the story and in the events and in the characters and the romance and everything that was happening but then halfway through the book the books changed perspectives and jumped a year in the future which i thought was really unnecessary and a very weird move because honestly for me i was no longer as invested in the story as i used to be and it felt so like disjointed and the two halves like didn't really make sense 
together. You know what I mean? I feel like it would have been better if the author had chosen to alternate perspectives from the very beginning in every other chapter or something like that instead of like halfway through the book because it felt so like disjointed. You know what I mean? And so like abrupt and like completely came out of nowhere. So like I didn't really enjoy the second half of the story as much as the first half because I wasn't really as connected or as invested in the characters or in the story in this new perspective anymore as I used to be. I hope that makes sense. Anyway, with all that to say, I rated this book three stars and frankly it was so disappointing that I don't really recommend it at all. The next book on this list is called Twice as Perfect. This book is a YA contemporary following a Nigerian Canadian main character as she navigates an estranged older brother, pressure from her parents about her future plans, and a Nigerian family wedding. This book is absolutely so fantastic and I really, really enjoyed it, so I rated it five stars. First of all, all the different storylines together were so distinct and they blended so well together. Initially, with all these different storylines, I was afraid that it would come off as the author trying to tackle too many things at once, but honestly, in this story, it literally worked so well together because I was so immersed in the story. It was literally so well done. I love complicated family relationships, especially with estranged siblings for some reason because, like, it adds an extra edge to the story and it really made the story so much more interesting because, like, I was so invested. The characters were so well developed and so distinct. The family dynamics felt so authentic and so well done. The Nigerian culture was so good. This book is literally so underrated. The plot was so intriguing and absolutely so engaging. This book is so good and it was so emotional. With all that said, this book was so perfect and I really, really enjoyed it. And it really exceeded my very low expectations because, like, I DNF'd. Actually, no. I rated the author's last book three stars and honestly I wish that I had been at it so I wasn't really planning on reading this book at all but I'm so glad that I did because like I mentioned it's a new five star favorite for this year so anyway with all that said I would highly highly recommend it the last book on this list and certainly not the least because we've already talked about the least book on this list is Master of Island for those who don't know this book is a YA fantasy sequel and it's the second book in the last book in this Bladesmith duology and honestly, I didn't enjoy this book as much as I enjoyed the prequel. I rated the prequel four stars, and I rated this book three stars, even though, like, the main things that I really enjoyed from the first book carried on in this book. For example, the social anxiety representation was so wonderful. The romance, the sister relationship, the characters, the plot, the world building. However, this book had more politics in it than the first book did, and I absolutely don't care for politics and fantasies or in contemporaries, frankly, or frankly in anything. Actually, maybe I enjoy them in historical fiction, because in historical fiction, it's like history, and I know like where the plot is headed, because normally, like typically, I've read the history beforehand, like in school or whatever. But anyway, I digress. I don't really enjoy political fantasies, and even though it wasn't like the main driving force of the story, whenever like the political storylines would happen, I just didn't care anymore. You know what I mean? And I was more invested in, like, all the other storylines that I mentioned earlier. So, anyway, the point is, I rated this book three stars, and I definitely didn't enjoy it as much as the first book. And I will read more books by this author in the future, because she is super talented and super underrated. But, frankly, overall, the first book was better. So, anyway, with that said, take that as you will. So, in conclusion, my favorite book on this list was definitely Twice as Perfect, and my least favorite book on this list was definitely Beating Heart Baby. So, I would highly recommend all the books on this list, with the exception of Beating Heart Baby. So, anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please don't hesitate to give it a big thumbs up. Comment down below the elephant emoji if you made it all the way to the end of the video. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel if you're new, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!